Lesson 38, the first calendar. This text will tell us about a primitive kind of calendar. Now first, listen to the text and answer this question. What is the importance of the dots, lines, and symbols engraved on stone, bones, and ivory? Future historians will be in a unique position when they come to record the history of our own times. They will hardly know which facts to select from the great mass of evidence that steadily accumulates. What is more, they will not have to rely solely on the written word. Films, videos, CDs, and CD-ROMs are just some of the bewildering amount of information they will have. They will be able, as it were, to see and hear us in action. But the historian, attempting to reconstruct the distant past, is always faced with a difficult task. He has to deduce what he can from the few scanty clues available. Even seemingly insignificant remains can shed interesting light on the history of early man. Up to now, historians have assumed that calendars came into being with the advent of agriculture, for then man was faced with a real need to understand something about the seasons. Recent scientific evidence seems to indicate that this assumption is incorrect. Historians have long been puzzled by dots, lines, and symbols which have been engraved on walls, bones, and the ivory tusks of mammoths. The nomads who made these markings lived by hunting and fishing during the last ice age, which began at about 35,000 BC and ended about 10,000 BC. By correlating markings made in various parts of the world, Historians have been able to read this difficult code. They have found that it is connected with the passage of days and the phases of the moon. It is, in fact, a primitive type of calendar. It has long been known that the hunting scenes depicted on walls were not simply a form of artistic expression. They had a definite meaning, for they were as near as early man could get to writing. It is possible that there is a definite relation between these paintings and the markings that sometimes accompany them. It seems that man was making a real effort to understand the seasons 20,000 years earlier than had been supposed. So what is the importance of the dots, lines and symbols engraved on stone, bones and ivory? Right. They are actually a primitive kind of calendar. This text tells us about the historian's new discovery of the first calendar. This discovery proves a former assumption that the first calendar existed with agriculture to be wrong. But the text does not start by telling us this discovery. In the first paragraph, the author tells us about how future historians' job would be made much easier when they researched our lives. Because archaeology is an unfamiliar subject, in this way it can be related by modern readers. Starting from what your audience or your readers are familiar with, it's a typical writing strategy. 从一个你的读者熟悉的角度着手，这是一个常用的写作的技巧。Okay, now let's look at some language points. Future historians will be in a unique position. Unique here means special. Notice unique has two meanings. One is special, the other is only. Unique 有两种词义。一个呢就是独一无二的, for example, each person's fingerprints are unique. 每个人的指纹都不一样. But it can also mean special. For example, 
This is a unique opportunity. It means this is a special opportunity. 那么注意用 unique 来表达特殊的这个词义的时候，通常前面要加不定冠词，如课文中一样。这里如果要表达这是唯一的机会，使用 only， 前面就要加定冠词。This is the only opportunity. The great mass of evidence, 大量的证据 Mass 的意思就是大量的或者大块的。我们需要根据不同的上下文来判断它的意思。Look at these examples. A mass of cloud, 一大块云彩 A huge mass of data, 大量的数据 A mass of people, 一群人 Evidence that steadily accumulates. Accumulate means get more. 它经常是用来形容财富或者知识的积累。It can also mean collect, 积攒越积越多。Look at these examples. As people accumulate more wealth, they tend to spend more as well. 人们的财富越积越多之后呢，他们花费也更多了。在这句中呢 ，accumulate. 做及物动词使用，它也可以做不及物动词使用。For example, dust began to accumulate in the room. 房间中灰尘越积越多。They will not have to rely solely on the written word. 只依赖文字材料。Solely means not anything or anybody else. 它跟 only 词义相近。但是强调不是别的东西或别人。For example, I'll hold you solely responsible if anything goes wrong. 出了任何问题的话，我只找你 ，not anybody else. The bewildering amount of information. Bewilder 意思是 puzzling， 令人困惑的。We use bewildering to describe a situation where you have too many choices. Or too much an amount. It is especially used to describe a situation that is too chaotic. For example, she found a bewildering range of skincare products in the shop. The range of products is too wide to describe a situation. They will be able, as it were, to see and hear us in action. As it were means, so to speak. To some degree, 某种程度上，可以说做插入语使用。For example, he became, as it were, a man with no identity. 你可以说呢，他成为了一个没有身份的人。To reconstruct the distant past, reconstruct means to rebuild, 重建。这里的意思是 to piece together. About the distant past, 再现遥远的过去。The distant past, distant 在这里指时间上的遥远。我们也可以形容空间上的遥远。A distant country, 一个遥远的国度。Look at more examples. In the not too distant future, 在不远的将来。Distant 也可以用来形容血缘关系之远。For example, distant relative, 远亲 The historian is always faced with a difficult task. Be faced with, 课文后边又出现了一次 Man was faced with a real need to understand something about the seasons. Be faced with, 跟 face 意思是不一样的 Be faced with, 面临什么事情 Face something, 直面什么东西 Look at these two examples. He was faced with the biggest challenge of his career. 他面临着职业中最大的挑战 You have to face the fact that she has left you. Face here means to confront the fact, to have enough courage to face the fact. 你一定要面对这个现实，他已经离开你了 He has to deduce what he can from the few scanty clues available. 
deduce from means to reason from. 用现有的证据来推理。For example, I deduce that she was married by the ring on her finger. 从她手上的戒指，我判断出 she is married. The few scanty clues. Scanty means not enough in size or amount. 不够的或者很少的。For example, a scanty lunch means you have not had enough. 一顿没太吃饱的午饭。His decision was based on scanty information. 他的决定是在信息并不充足的情况下做出的。The few scanty clues available. 现有的这些线索。We'll look at how to use the word available. His latest novel is now available in our bookstore. 他最新的小说在我们的书店有出售。Or you can also describe a person as available. He is not available now. Can I take a message? 这里 available 是不在的意思。The books have taken up all the available space. 那么 ，space 不仅可以做表语，也可以做定语。书呢，占了现有的所有空间。它做定语的时候，也可以放在修饰的名词后边。这句话就可以表达为 all the space available. Both are acceptable. Even seemingly insignificant remains. Seemingly means apparently. 表面上不重要的。For example, a seemingly easy question is actually a difficult one. Can shed interesting light on the history of early man. Shed light on means to illustrate or enlighten. For example, we are hoping that his arrival will shed some light on the mystery. 我们希望他的到来呢，可以解开一些疑团。With the advent of agriculture, advent, the arrival of something important, 一个重要事件的到来。For example, the advent of steamships. By correlating markings made in various parts, correlate means. To connect, especially as a counterpart, 互相联系并比照 For example, stress levels and heart disease are strongly correlated. 受到压力的程度和心脏病有很强的关系 This difficult code, code means a secret kind of language, 一种密码或者不容易懂的语言破译密码就是 break the code. It is connected with the passage of days. Passage here means the passing by of days. 英文中还有 the passage of time, 时间流逝这个说法 For example, the memory will fade with the passage of time. 随着时间逝去，记忆也会淡漠 The faces of the moon, 指的是月亮的圆缺 Face means a part of the process, 是指过程中的一个阶段 For example, a transitional phase, 过渡阶段 It is in fact a primitive type of calendar. Primitive 在这里是原始的意思 Primitive 通常呢有两种词义，一种是形容原始社会的原始。For example, 原始人就是 primitive man。还有一层词义是 crude or poor， 是指条件之差。For example, conditions at some schools are still primitive， which means conditions are still very poor. They had a definite meaning. Definite 在这篇课文中还出现了一次
It's possible that there is a definite relation between these paintings and the markings. 这两句话中 "definite" 的意思是不太一样的 A definite meaning means a fixed meaning, 有确定的、固定的含义 A definite relation means a certain, a clear relation. 这两者的关系是显然的、明确的 I'll give you two more examples. The date for the meeting is still not definite. Here, definite means it's still not fixed. 日期还没有定下来 There has been a definite improvement in your English. Here, definite means a clear, obvious, 有很显然的、显著的进步 They were as near as early man could get to writing. 这些呢，已经是早期的人类能够接近文字形式的最近的一种方式。As near as 最接近。I'll give you one more example. His diaries are as near as we will ever get to the truth. 他的日记是我们能够最为接近真相的方式。Markings that sometimes accompany them. Accompany means. Be or happen together with something else. 和他们在一起的这些 markings. We can accompany a person. For example, I accompanied my mother to the station. 我陪伴母亲一起去车站 Accompany 也可以用来形容东西 For example, the course book is accompanied by two cassettes. 这本教材还配有两盘磁带 Man was making a real effort to understand the seasons twenty thousand years earlier than has been supposed. 这句话表达的意思就是 than the time which has been supposed. 但是注意 than 在这个从句中做从句的主语 So you don't need to repeat the time which. 最后，我们来看一下课文中几处究竟表达的是肯定还是否定的意思。我们在前面课文中学习过 ，hardly means almost not， 所以这个副词可以间接的表达否定的含义。They will not have to rely solely on the written word. Not 已经是否定了，但是 solely on the written word 这句话连起来，其实要表达的是。They will have a lot of things to rely on. 是肯定的意思 The few scanty clues. Few has a negative meaning. Scanty means insufficient, not enough. So few is used to emphasize scanty. 两个词加在一块就更强调了不够的意思，否定 Even seemingly insignificant remains. Seemingly insignificant, actually significant. So, 尽管有 in 这个表达否定的前缀，其实要表示的是肯定的意思。Now, finally, let's come back from the language to the content of the text. This text is entitled "The First Calendar," but is actually about how historians discovered the first calendar. Was twenty thousand years earlier than they had assumed. 也就是说，这篇课文其实讲的是历史学家如何发现了并且更正了自己错误的事情。我们在中学都学过历史课，觉得历史呢就是那些背诵的事实。We thought that history is composed of those memorized facts, but it's not that simple. 但其实呢，历史的含义并不这么简单。In the broad sense, history is the past, or the human past. 广义的说，历史就是过去，或者说人类的过去。But in its narrow sense, history refers to the recorded past. 狭义的来讲，历史是指有文字记载的过去，通过历史学家分析和解释的过去。Historians need to collect, piece together, analyze, and interpret these historical records. 
就像这篇课文讲的那样，历史学家最早推想，最早的日历呢，一定是和农业的出现一同诞生的。但是后来掌握的证据才发现，他们原来的设想必须要推翻。So from this text, we know that sometimes historical facts are not a hundred percent objective, or rather, historical facts can only be relatively. Objective. Okay, so much on the topic of history. See you next time.